Hello guys, in this video we are going to see purely non-linearly separable uh, case. So here you can see a data like this. This is purely non-linearly separable because even if you allow some kind of error, then to a lot of uh, a lot of samples will go in error. Basically, you cannot have a small error over here. So there is there are a lot of samples over here. So to deal with such problems we have something that is known as the kernel trick so the intuition behind the kernel trick is instead of transfer instead of uh, separating these classes in this particular uh, domain this feature space what we can do is we can transform this feature, feature space into some higher dimensional feature space that is the intuition so we have this x every x over here is having two features x1 and x2 every x over here so we can have some function say some phi of x say if you uh, do it something like this x1 square so the phi of x has three dimensions you can see this was just two dimensions phi of x is three dimension one two three and its first dimension is nothing but the first x1 square, second is x2 square and third is root x1 x2. So when we transform this particular vector into this particular space, the transformed phi of x space, we assume that this particular thing would become linearly separable. So it is like this. So this is my data. Suppose when I transform it into phi of x, what will happen is there'll be a new dimension. There'll be a new dimension which is coming towards you basically. So this is the new dimension that I'm getting. What will happen is I can have some uh, particular thing by which this particular data comes up and uh, this, this stays down. So this is like this. And now I can uh, have a higher dimensional plane which can separate both of these which is linear so this is a higher dimensional linear plane which can separate both of the classes like this so let us uh, visualize this uh, nicely using graphs and matlab so let's go to matlab so we are in matlab this is the code so i'm going to use scatter 3d so 3d scatter plot basically to uh, plot uh, this uh, higher dimensional space so let us i'll put this in the description below the code so that you can also play with the code so let us run and see what happens so this is my non-linear data that i have with me when i use phi this particular transformation phi transformation so you can see this 2d plot this 2d vector space has now been transformed into a 3d vector space so if you look it from this angle it almost looks like the same but if you change the dimension so see there is a new dimension that is added in which now you can see that the data is purely linearly separable so that is what you can see over here also there is this exceptional point over here so this is some sort of outlier so that you can see it is coming over here this outlier so now using the c parameter you can uh, check whether you want to uh, put this into the margin or you can afford error or all those sorts of things so this is about the visualization that i wanted to show you so now that you have this code you can change the powers and uh, you can check what all is happening so suppose that I put power 1, you can just take a feel of what is happening. So here you can see with the power of 1, I am just uh, here, this is the transformation function that I have. You can see this is a transformation like this. It is not linearly separable though, but uh, you can always play with this and it looks good. So that's all. 
so now that we have visualized this particular thing let us see how can we uh, apply this how can we make this into practice so uh, please note that we don't know what is phi of x we uh, for this data this phi of x is pretty fine but then if i change the data then i don't know whether this same phi of x will work or not right so suppose someone gives you phi of x suppose uh, magically someone gives you phi of x let us see what will happen and then we'll come back to uh, we don't have phi of x okay so suppose that we know phi of x for some particular reason now that the data is linearly separable in the higher dimension we can use previously learned uh, svm method in the higher dimension please uh, note that this is our assumption the linearly separable in a higher dimension is our assumption this may be true or maybe not it is true but uh, most cases it is true in most cases uh, the higher dimensional data will be linearly separable but we we don't know and it also depends on what uh, phi of x you take right okay so now we are doing the same thing that we done we have done in previous two videos actually so we are defining the cost so i am also introducing the c parameter over here so that if suppose uh, they are not uh, linearly separable or they have just a little bit of error we can take care of that using the c parameter that we saw in my previous video now same we'll apply the optimization on this so we'll get the same thing we'll get this is as omega please note that there is one big change that is this particular thing we used to have x over here now there is phi x right so similarly in omega also there will be phi x so these formulas are actually the same you do the same steps there is no difference and you can find omega not like this so please note that there is just phi of x that is changed over here now what will be the decision rule so suppose that uh, we have applied this uh, cost by optimization we have got the values of alpha i we know what is alpha i now we know w we know w not so we we are ready with everything and uh, let us see what is the decision rule so once we have done with the training so this is the training that we are doing now in the test so in the test what will happen is suppose i get z now z is some uh, particular uh, vector which is uh, which i have to classify this is a test vector which i have to classify whether it belongs to this class or this class which class does it belong to so it is the same thing you multi you first transform this z because now this z is in this feature space but i have my linearly separable boundary in my phi space right that three dimensional space so what i will do is i will first transform this z multiplied with the window a window uh, multiplied with the weights that i have found over here <clears throat> if this particular thing is greater than 0 that is positive it belongs to the positive class if it is negative it belongs to the negative class so we are happy so we have a very good solution which can deal with uh, non linear data but the same problem we don't know phi of x so if if somebody magically gives me phi of x then the whole uh, transformation is valid but uh, whole whatever der derivations we did is valid but the problem is we don't know phi of x so what to do okay so here you can see that <clears throat> you actually so if suppose i instead of writing dz like this i can write dz of dz like this where i am just substituting the value of omega over here so omega is alpha i y i phi x of phi of x i so that i am putting over here so i get this thing so now you can see we don't actually need phi of x but we need this dot product we only need this dot product and many of these dot product we don't actually need to 
uh, know what is phi of x if we know the dot product we are done because the decision rule only has the dot product so what we can do is we can use this particular thing as a matrix kind of thing so instead of writing this i am writing it like this which is some k matrix we'll see what is the k matrix so this is k of xi comma z so xi is one feature uh, the training features that i have and z is my test feature so now this particular matrix will say whether uh, what is happening so we'll we'll see what is this matrix so where k xm xn is equal to phi this dot product i am um, replacing with this k matrix and this is what is known as the kernel trick so what is this k matrix let us see so this is known as the kernel gram matrix where this matrix is made by using some kernel function we will see what are the kernel functions and uh, putting them on all the test samples so here these are my test samples so say this is my first test sample second third fourth and so on so like this i am having a matrix which is n cross n where n are total number of samples n total number of samples so we will get an n cross n matrix which is uh, of uh, which is used by the kernel gram matrix basically okay so in order for this optimization to work so you can see in this optimization also we will have this dot product term so we don't need to know what is phi of x if only we knew the dot product so this when you open this so this will also be like this phi of x into uh, this particular dot product right so in order to satisfy this in order for this to be a convex optimization what you'll have to do is this matrix this k matrix the kernel gram matrix must be symmetric it must be a symmetric matrix and it should be positive semi-definite so that is the eigenvalue should be non-negative for this matrix so this can be thought of somewhat as a covariance matrix so it is a some kind of covariance matrix because uh, covariance matrix also has the following properties so it is some kind of covariance matrix that we can use this is a very important uh, condition because it is important for convergence of the iterative method used for solving the constraint optimized problem so in order that this converges this particular optimization using the numerical solution converges we need that this k matrix should be uh, positive semi-definite and symmetric and uh, so now the question how will i get these k's right so this is you have these particular options you can use a linear kernel which is just uh, the transpose that is you just uh, multiply the dot product of each and every sample with other so you take the dot product of say the first sample with the second with the third with fourth fifth sixth with the, all these samples and you can get a matrix like this so that is what we call as a linear kernel or else you can use a polynomial kernel so in a polynomial kernel you will see that um, it is uh, some a into xm a transpose where xm is over here and into xn where xn is over here plus b raised to p so all these a b and p are kernel parameters so this these values you can change depending on how you are getting the results so if suppose i put p is equal to 2 and i don't get a nice results so i can put 4 and c i can change this b and see how how is uh, how am i getting the results and that's all so it is like we need a particular kernel which will uh, nicely separate these uh, points right or you can use a gaussian kernel so this is a gaussian kernel you can use uh, this kind of kernel so these are the options that you have and uh, by these functions you can define the values 
over here and you can find out the uh, SEM problem. So you can see so easily just by using a kernel trick you can uh, transform the vector space over here or the feature space over here to a higher dimension which might be linearly separable. So let us just quickly see the architecture of this kernel method. So first we'll train. So from training we can calculate the alpha i's for optimization of the cost. So we get alpha i, we get omega and we get omega naught from the training. So we have these three parameters now. While the test phase what we'll do is so this is the input this is the input vector that i want to test suppose uh, this is so we used a z notation over here here i am using x so basically this is z if uh, so this is z yeah. so this is the input vector that i have now what i'll do is i will want to calculate this z so my if you see my decision rule my decision rule is like this uh, the modified decision rule actually it was like this but because we don't know what is phi actually we know this dot product so we are using this particular form so it is summation of i is equal to 1 to n all the uh, x i's right so where x i's are my training samples these are my training samples right so this this is the formula that i have so what i'll do is i have this x which is my test and these x size which are my training samples so i'll take the x and first multiply or uh, see what is the uh, from this matrix or uh, from these particular functions also you can see so if i decide some function say i decide this function so what i'll have to do is i have x m suppose as this test vector and i'll have x1 that is my training and I will multiply with alpha 1 y1 which again I will get from training y1 I know because uh, that is basically the label of this x1 sample you multiply so you will get the first so there will be alpha 1 y1 k of x comma x1 plus you take this so that is alpha 2 y2 k of x2 so uh, sorry k of x comma x2 plus so on up till n uh, n sample you take all the dot products multiplied with alpha and y n you add all of them and that will be your d of x so now if this particular thing is greater than zero you assign that test sample to positive class if it is less than zero you assign that to negative class so if suppose in a higher dimensional case this particular class is positive and this is negative so you will see that uh, in this space we will get a boundary somewhat like this because when you are uh, lifting it so suppose this is my uh, value and I am lifting it so like this so when I again bring it to the space so this will get curved sort of thing so I'll get a circle boundary that is okay. So by this SVM can separate linearly separable data also very nicely using the kernel trick. And that's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you.